والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الحمد لله you are watching way of a muslim defining the muslim character i'm your host yusuf estes and for the next few minutes we'd like to talk about the subject of the teachings and sayings of muhammad peace and blessing be upon him to help define the muslim character what is the behavior of a muslim and this is what we're going to be exploring now in this segment of our program i want to begin by mentioning that anas may allah be pleased with him reports that whenever the prophet peace be upon him said anything he liked to repeat his words three times so that the meanings would be understood fully and whenever he came upon a group of people he would greet them and he would re- repeat this salutation three times now this is recorded in both sahih bukhari and muslim so therefore we have no doubt whatsoever this is something very important that we should pay attention to very often people misunderstand each other and a lot of it has to do with our communication sometimes i say something and in my case i say something kind of fast and then what happens is you misunderstand or you didn't hear all of it so if i repeat it then it makes it easier for you for instance if i want to give you instructions about something then it's rather important it doesn't hurt to repeat it will you please go over there and shut off the microwave oven please go over there and turn it off the microwave oven needs to be shut off please do that and so this would be in the sunnah or the way of muhammad to repeat what we're trying to get across to somebody but especially when we're teaching something in islam we like to repeat it sometimes when we're dealing with the arabic language then when we say something especially if you're not familiar with it it could be difficult for you so this gives us a chance to hear it again and then hear it again and in greeting somebody if you said salam alaykum salam alaykum salam alaykum and then people feel good look at this guy he's really a happy person he's given me salams three times and <laughs> wa alaykum salam rahmatullah so this is a very good characteristic of the prophet peace be upon him something for us to learn take benefit from it the next thing that he talked about and actually practiced himself is the way that he delivered his speeches now i meet a lot of the youngsters who say when i grow up i would like to be a khatib a person who gives the juma khutbah or the friday sermon and if i'm going to do that what are some of the things i need to know about it well the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam peace be upon him taught us about that he says and this is by amr ibn yasir by the way a very famous companion of muhammad peace be upon him he says that he heard the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that to prolong the salah and shorten the khutbah indicates religious knowledge of a person so make your salah long and your sermon or khutbah short now what we mean by this is that when the one who is speaking gives a talk about islam he comes to the point very very quickly and this is something that is indicative of a person who knows his subject he doesn't need a lot of verbiage he doesn't keep talking and talking and talking trying to get his point across because if he really knows his subject he comes to the point captures your attention deliver the message and then what go to the prayer and stand in the prayer and recite long surahs or verses from the Quran and then this is a, the best kind of sermon that there is by the way we don't see a lot of that these days i find even in my own khutbah sometimes that i'm talking a lot longer and praying a lot shorter than i really should be but sometimes we feel like we have to say more we want this opportunity we've got everybody together here in the juma khutbah let's keep going and going and going but in reality the shorter speeches have more effect they really do there is one of the teachings of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is just like that listen to this somebody went to prophet muhammad peace be upon him and he said uh, tell me something about islam that only you could tell me and actually the word he said was deen the way of islam tell me something about the way of islam that only you could tell me now 
If somebody came to me and said that, boy, what I'd be thinking of, man, could I give this guy a speech? I could tell him this, and I could say that, and so and so and so. And others would say, man, I could speak volumes. Here's a guy who's a walking library, could talk for the next three weeks. But the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, answered this statement, this request from this man, with a very simple, small expression. The man says, Advise, say something to me about this deen that only you could tell me. Look what he said. And it means say, I put everything in the trust of Allah and then be steadfast on what you said. I want to repeat that. Say, I put everything into the trust of Allah and be steadfast on what you said. And according to the Hadith we just heard, I'll repeat it again. Say, I put everything into the trust of Allah and then be steadfast on what you said. What do we mean by this? Well, when a person says, Ashadu ilai ilai illallah, I bear witness that there's none to worship except Allah. That's a form of putting your trust into Allah. And you begin to worship Him alone and nothing else. Worshiping the Creator and not His creation. And so by putting my trust into Allah like this, and then being steadfast on that, I have complied with this teaching of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. I want to move to another subject, and this was something mentioned by his wife, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, named Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, reports that she says here, I have never seen the Prophet of Allah laughing so much so that you could see deep down into his mouth to this ulva. And he, she said he used to only smile. And this is also nice to know that the idea of this heavy laughter, oh, 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 that we see people doing, is really not in the way of the Muslim character. This we don't really find with Muhammad. And in fact, I recall another hadith when he, peace be upon him, was passing by some people who were laughing like that. They were laughing so hard, oh, 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 you know. And he looked at him real serious and he said, you know, if you knew what I knew, you would laugh less and cry more. So it's appropriate for a Muslim to smile, as mentioned here. But it's also appropriate for a Muslim to control themselves, that we don't want to be out here ar, ar, ah, 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 like this because this is really more like the way of a donkey brain than it is for the behavior of a good human being. It's good to give a nice polite laughter to somebody, say something funny and you can ha ah, ha ah, ha ah, and something cute or comical. But to reserve ourselves, and this goes back to some of the other teachings that we've been talking about as well in this idea of being shy as a Muslim and being reserved. All of this is developing the good character of the Muslim. The next one we want to talk about here is on the authority of Abu Huraira. And he says that he heard the Prophet wasalam, say that you should love someone to a certain degree in moderation because perhaps one day you're going to have dislike for this person. But you should also dislike a person with a certain moderation because someday you might find that this is somebody you love. Now, this is a very important statement here because we are learning not to go overboard. It doesn't mean, by the way, that you shouldn't really love somebody deeply, but to have moderation in it is important because the real love that any Muslim should have should first be for Allah. Naturally, we love our mother, we love our sisters and brothers, and we love our spouses, husbands, and wives. Naturally, we love our children, too. But still, when we're talking about a relationship with a friend or somebody we know and our everyday dealing with them, we want to be careful not to make this a relationship where we're dependent or codependent on somebody else. Now, modern psychiatrists are telling us that's exactly true today. Something that was taught to us 1,400 years ago, and here, amazingly enough, this is what the psychiatrists are saying, the same thing. You don't want to become someone that's called codependent. It means that you don't have anything if something happens to the other person. 
Many times we hear about somebody who's so much in love with somebody that if they die or leave them or divorce them, that this person commits suicide. Well, this is way out of Islam. It's not acceptable whatsoever for a Muslim to do something like that. Or they might even begin taking drugs or doing alcohol, any of these types of things. But they said, oh, I lost a person I love so much, I can't stand it anymore, blah, blah, blah. And that's because they did not adhere to what Muhammad Sallallahu taught us. Now, here's another teaching that I think all of us could take benefit from, especially these days when there's so much rushing around, hurrying to go here and hurrying to go there. Everybody seems to be in this huge rush. Listen to this one. And this is on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas. May Allah be pleased with him. He says that when they were returning from Arafat during the Hajj, that some of the people behind the Prophet, peace be upon him, were beating their animals and their camels, trying to run faster and faster and hurrying. So he pointed toward them with his whip and he said, O oh people, proceed calmly. There is no virtue in rushing. So what we learn from this immediately is that to be in a big hurry is not what it's all about. Of course, if you live in the West, you see this all the time. We have what we call rush hour traffic. I heard someone say, why do you call it rush hour when you get into the traffic? Nobody can go anywhere. It's stopped. <laughs> but you see what happens when you hurry up too fast. You can't go anywhere. That's a very good point that we're learning from our blessed prophet 1,400 years ago. Don't be in a hurry. Take your time. Be patient. And also, have mercy for each other. We're going to wrap up this part of our program right here and then come back right after these messages and learn more about the way of the Muslim in defining the Muslim character. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we're back. And you're watching Way of the Muslim, Defining the Muslim Character. We were talking on the issue of the importance of Muslim character as regards the way that Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, taught us. We talked about being in a hurry, rushing into things, and taking our time or being polite and just uh, you know following along as, with things as they go being a lot better than trying to rush, rush, hurry, hurry all the time. Now we want to go to the next topic, and that is that the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, is reported to have said, and this is on the authority of Abu Huraira, he said that whoever believes in Allah and the last day, let him show hospitality to his guest, and he who believes in Allah on the last day, let him maintain good relationship with his relatives. And whoever believes in Allah in the last day to either say good things or else remain silent. Now, in another hadith teaching of Muhammad, it's reported that he says, whoever believes in Allah in the last day should accommodate his guest according to the guest's rights. And then he was asked, well, what is a guest's rights, O Prophet of Allah? And he said, it is to accommodate the guest for a day and a night. And hospitality extends for three days. And whatever is beyond that is charity. Now, this is a very good teaching for us when we start talking about rights. Because, you see, Islam comes with rights and limits. Now, all of us are interested in rights. We talk about it all the time. Human rights, women's rights, grandparents' rights, children's rights. 
We have people now talking about animals' rights, even plants' rights. But did you know that these rights have been covered in Islam 1,400 years ago? We're only referring to a small part of that when we talk about this today. But in Islam, it goes very deep about these rights and what the limits are. What we're interested in as a human being is what's my rights, but we don't care about the limits as long as I get what I want. But the limits means that this is where it stops. You can have this to a point, and then it stops. Let's take an example, something that came with all the prophets, and nothing new when it comes in Islam, is that the monotheistic religion of Islam is teaching you don't eat pork. You don't eat the meat of the pig. We learn from this immediately that we have rights. We have the right to eat a lot of things. But then there's this limit. Certain things that we don't eat. Same with drinking. You can drink anything except don't drink alcohol. And these are the limits. And then what about when we talk about the behavior? And this is what our program is about. Developing good Muslim character. We learn very clear here some rights and limits. Your guest has rights on you. But what are the limits? Well, it's pretty clear from this. If you'd like to have your guest stay with you overnight, a day and a night, this is in Islam. Three days, this is also in Islam. But whatever you do beyond that is going to be an act of charity. You don't have to do it. You can tell him, okay, your three days are up. Have a nice time. <laughs> or you can allow the guest to stay a little longer according to how you would like to be charitable for your guest. The next thing that it mentioned was about kinship, about your relatives. How do you treat your relatives? Because it says, let the one who believes in Allah in the last day. This is talking about the people who are going to paradise. If you want to go to paradise, if you want to go to heaven, then one of the things that's important is how you treat your relatives. And it starts with your mom. As we know from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, somebody asked him, who after Allah and his messenger has the most rights on me? He said, your mother. He said, then who? He said, your mother. He said, then who? He said, your mother. And then your father. So look how much rights your mother has. And this is the closest relative to you. Who carried you inside of her for nine months? And then who was giving birth to you in great pain and agony? And who was the one that raised you up and took care of you, taught you how to walk, taught you how to talk? Your mother. So certainly you can see why she'd have the rights over you. From the time you're born until you die, your mother has rights on you. Then what about your dad? Well, he's the next one in line, having rights on you. Your parents have rights. Now, you might say, well, yeah, but my parents are different. They're not nice, blah, blah, blah. doesn't matter what they're doing. You're doing this for Allah. And as a good Muslim, developing good Muslim character, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that you're not doing this for the people. You're doing it for yourself in front of Allah. You want Allah to know that you're doing this really because Allah has shown you the way to do it through his last and final prophet. I want to uh, amplify a little bit more on that subject because he also spoke about the way that we deal with not just the guest and not just the one who is the, uh, the, the relatives, but also in the way that we deal with with our own tongue, our speech, because he says, let the one who believes in the law and the last day either say good things or be silent. Well, what does this mean? Well, naturally, you don't want to say something that's bad, like hurting people's feelings. You don't want to say a lie. Certainly, that wouldn't be in Islam to tell lies. You don't want to say things that are going to provoke trouble. You don't want to say things that you're carrying gossip and all the rest of it. All the things that we're talking about here is either say something good or keep silent. In another hadith or teaching of Muhammad, I recall that he said that it's sufficient for a person to just repeat what he hears in a day to be considered a liar. Now, that's an amazing thing because what you hear, and that's true if you think about it, if you repeated everything you heard, from this person and that person and television and all the rest of it in a day's time, chances are, for sure, you'd be telling some lies in there, whether you meant to or not. 
it's not essential, it's not important for us to just keep talk, 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 talking all the time. I really don't know where we got this idea from, but it's very prevalent in today's society. It seems as though we just keep going on and on and talking and talking. And if we're sitting in the car, we feel like we have to chatterbox, chatterbox, or else we want the radio going, have a noise going all the time. But there's something really beautiful in being silent. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying that right here. Yasmut, he said in Arabic, be silent. And the silence is golden. It's very beautiful. Think about the Quran and think about how you can do some good deeds today. Use your time wisely. Even when you're sitting still, even when you're traveling somewhere, you can use this time instead of trying to talk, 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 just to keep the tongue busy. And it, talking about this tongue, the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us that if a person would like to go to Jannah, he said, I can guarantee the Jannah, the paradise, for a person who can guard two things, the tongue and their private parts. So certainly this one, the tongue, is the most dangerous of all. So if we guard this tongue, we'll be in good shape. And here's another important aspect of developing the Muslim character. And that is gentleness. This is narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu. He said that the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Indeed, Allah is gentle, and he loves gentleness. And Allah gives due to gentleness that which he does not give to harshness. And you know, today we see a lot of harshness in the way that people deal with each other. The harshness, the way that we treat each other in the streets, in the markets, in the shops, and at the schools, even in the mosques. It's not good that we see this harsh treatment when somebody said, just do this, like this way, you know. To be gentle with the people is to follow the teaching of Muhammad, وسلم, peace be upon him, and it's certainly a good way for us to gain ajr or reward with Allah. Because this gentleness is something that Allah loves very much. And sometimes you feel like, well, these people are being harsh with me. Why shouldn't I re retaliate the same way that they're treating me? I'll treat them back. But it's the one who has this gentleness the one who will really take their time, relax, and be in Islam, who will gain the reward from Allah. What I mean by that is, if you remember, Islam means peaceful submission to Allah. So when I'm in peace, even when things are happening that I don't particularly like, I'm still going to be gentle in the way I deal. Now, this is talking about how I deal with strangers and people that I barely know. What about the gentleness that I should have for those people I know pretty well? My good friends, my family, my mom, my dad. How should I treat them? And it should be gentle, soft, kind. Because the kind treatment will actually get other people to do the same thing too. And it makes everybody have more peace and sakina sweetness, tranquility in them. So this is a very important aspect of Islam is this gentleness called rifq or rafiq in Islam. I want to now mention something about the truth of a person who is dealing in sin. Now, a lot of times we think that it would be the best kind of Muslim would have no sin whatsoever. But that's really not possible because we're human beings. A person is not an angel. And we are going to be making mistakes. We're going to do sins. And this next hadith deals with that subject. This is narrated on the authority of Ibn Abbas. May Allah be pleased with him. Who said that the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that there is no believer except that he has a sin which he commits from time to time. Or a sin which he continually persists in, doesn't leave it until he dies or leaves this world. Indeed, the believer was created as one who is frequently tried and tested, and he often repents, but then he forgets. When he is admonished, he accepts the admonition. 
This is a good hadith or teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu that gives us a number of points. First of all, that we need to remember that we are human beings and we're being tested by Allah. This testing that we're talking about is our life. From the time we're born to the time we die, we're in a test from Allah. And this certainly focuses on that subject because it says that we're going to sin. But we're going to stop sinning at some point or repent for that. But then there may be a sin that we'll commit and not repent for before we die or something that people persist in. And that <clears throat> sometimes we forget. And, you know, this is really something the human being is all about. And this is a truth in this, that the human being is made to forget. The word in Arabic for human is ins, or insan. And when we say, I forgot, it comes from the same root, ananasiya, I forgot. So the human being has been created to forget. Allah knows we forget. But this is something that as a Muslim, we need to try to overcome. We need to remember, think. One of the best thinkings, by the way, is to remember Allah, to think of Allah. So, if you make a sin, do your best to repent from that. And if you make it again, if you forgot and did it again, don't think, oh, Allah is not going to forgive me, because that's the wrong attitude. Repent again. Repent every time you make a mistake. And try your best to... To stop, of course, but at the same time, don't give up on yourself. Don't say, oh, well, I give up because, you know what, I'm a sinner. I can't stop sinning, and that's just my nature. Don't do that. Try your best to do your good deeds, but if you make a mistake, then just say, okay, stuck for Allah. Allah forgive me, and then, inshallah, Allah will forgive you. Our whole series that we're dealing with here and the way of the Muslim is intended to develop the character of a Muslim using the teachings of Muhammad wasallam. I hope, inshallah, that these teachings will benefit me too because the mouth is the closest to the ear and I hope that I gain from this and become a better Muslim through these efforts. And this is a prayer for all of us. Allah guide us to do our best. Ameen. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.